Good morning. Good morning. And I welcome you to worship this morning here at United Lutheran Church. Welcome to you who are our guests this morning in worship. We're glad to have you worshiping with us this morning. And welcome to those who join us through Facebook Live and through our radio broadcast this morning. A few announcements I'd like to draw your attention to on pages 7 and 8 of our bulletin, as, long, as well as an insert. We've got lots of things going on during this uh, December, month of December. There is a pack, backpacking event this coming Wednesday, December 7th at 11.30 in the morning. Uh, they, we have 71 more backpacks to pack for Phoenix Elementary. Uh, and we'll close out the year uh, with providing lunches over the weekends. There's coffee and devotions. We'll meet on Wednesday as well at 10.30 a.m. in the lounge, and all are welcome to join uh, for a time of uh, connect with God and with the others. Uh, there's an adult education class going on. We've met for a couple of weeks, and we'll go for a couple of weeks more. It's called Great Expectations, and it's Advent readings from uh, the prophet Isaiah, which are the readings that we have in our first lessons each week. Uh, you'll know a taste of Christmas, uh, and we know Christmas isn't always a merry and bright time for everyone. Some people are alone at this time of the year, and we are trying to bring some uh, food and cheer as uh, on December 21st at 6.15. We're going to divide up into groups and bring around food, um, some Christmas treats to people, so giving everyone a little taste of Christmas. I say congratulations to the United Lutheran Church women on uh, having another successful Christmas luncheon, and thank you to all who helped out with that this year. There's uh, always people that step up and uh, serve as our, our servers and work in the kitchen, so thank you to all who helped out again this year. We also note that the, the, in two weeks from today is the Sunday School Christmas program during our worship time that day. And if you're looking for a babysitter, on Sunday, December 11th, from 2 to 5, uh, we have uh, uh, babysitting services that will also help the youth of the church as uh, they're preparing for summer trips. Um, and on the, we'll also note today, taking place after worship, Weston Lee Drees, child of Austin Drees and Emily Fromm, will be baptized today, as well as Olivia Hutterly, uh, the uh, daughter of Eric and uh, Vivian Hutterly. So those baptisms taking place today following our, our worship service. As a congregational family, we offer our sympathy and our prayerful support uh, to the family of James Nelson. His funeral will be at Amundsen Funeral Home this coming Tuesday at 10.30. A note about our bulletin. If you look on the cover of your bulletin today, You'll see um, an image of a little town of Bethlehem that we're not used to seeing. It's actually a, a, a current picture of what is known as the security wall that surrounds uh, the town of Bethlehem today. It is a reminder that when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, it was into a real world with real world situations and problems and issues of security, and the same is true for today. It reminds us that uh, Christ this Advent comes to us again in our real world and all the things that take place uh, around us. I believe that's all the announcements I will make at this time, but I'd like to call on uh, Linda Paulson, who's going to uh, share with us a little bit about our Good Gifts Christmas Fair, which is coming up next Sunday. Good morning. I am here to talk about the Good Gifts Christmas Fair. Uh, hopefully you all have a bulletin and there's an insert there with a lot of information about it. Uh, there's an order form which you can take home and look at and send a check into the office or mail it if you'd like to order that way. You can go online and read about gifts available and um, charge them to a credit card. Or, better yet, you can join us next Sunday in the Fellowship Hall following the service for the Good Gifts Christmas Fair. We'll have it set up with displays and lots of information about the gifts, and we'll also have chili and cookies 
and coffee for you to enjoy. So I hope you can come. I wanted to talk a little bit about the gifts that are offered this year. Um, if you look at the order form, towards the bottom are ELCA good gifts. Those are called God's Global Barnyard. And a person can buy a cow, a chicken, pigs, and give to that person who just has everything. It's a fun gift, and we've had this on our list since um, our first Christmas fair many years ago. Uh, another area that we have are local gifts, and that goes very close to home, across the street, Phoenix Elementary School. And there are two areas there. There's a principal's fund, which helps families, many of whom live in poverty, with emergency problems and uh, just helps out where needed for children and the families at Phoenix. And we also have an area where you can support our backpack program, uh, helping to pay for the food that goes home once a month for the weekend for children who need it. So those are all good gifts. Um, towards the top, we have something called Gifts to Africa, and those are a little different this year, so I wanted to talk about them. Our church has a close connection with missions in Africa, in Tanzania. We've had four different missionary trips there over the years, and our contact has been Dr. Mark Jacobson, a medical missionary there for more than 40 years. Mark died in February of this year of a brain tumor. And those of us who knew him far and wide do not want his mission and the projects he began to fall away. We want to continue to support them. So these gifts support projects that the Jacobson family has recommended. Um, the first one is an endowment for medical school scholarships in Tanzania. And this would be, it's an ambitious goal. They want to raise $1.1 million. And the money from this fund, they would use the interest and dividends to support five medical students in Tanzania per year. It also would support some of the work that Linda has done with children and widows in Tanzania. Um, Looking at the statistics, the doctor to patient ratio in Tanzania is 1 to 20,000. The uh, World Health Organization recommends at least 1 to 4,000 people would be more, would be better. So there's a great need for doctors in Tanzania, and this is one way to help that happen. The second area is salient hospice. And those of us who travel to Tanzania always went on hospice visits. This was a very special visit with a nurse, an evangelist, maybe some volunteers. And I always felt entering someone's mud hut who was at the end of life, supported by these people, I was standing on sacred ground. It's very moving experience. Dr. Jacobson started the hospice early on when he was in Africa because many people were dying of AIDS and many of these people were dying alone because people were afraid of AIDS and they were afraid of getting the disease. So he developed hospice, the salient hospice, and it has spread throughout Africa now. So that's a wonderful thing to support. And the third area is called Foundation for Cancer Center in Tanzania. Another project Mark started, knowing that there were many people with cancer who needed help in Tanzania. And um, it's just unfortunate that Mark contact cancer himself. Uh, so anyway, I invite you to take this home, look at the order form, think about it, pray about it, and Give a gift from your heart this Christmas. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Um, and on that same Sunday, we're going to have special guests 
Jason Bergman and Gloria Godwin were going to come and share during the worship service about the work that we're doing in Tanzania. So it'll be a nice lead in as we come and uh, join in that Christmas fair. And so at this time, we will have the lighting of our Advent candle. around your waist and baptize with the Holy Spirit's fire. Bless us as we mirror your mighty fire in these sinful flames and teach us to mirror your justice in these paths we prepare. We ask that peace abound until none hurt or destroy over all the earth. Amen. I would invite the congregation to please stand as we join together on our order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be God's name forever. Amen. Beloved, now is the time to wake from sleep. Let us confront our sins, confess them, to one another who is, to the one who is merciful and just. God of new beginnings, we, we confess, confess that we have not welcomed your holy reign. reign. We have strayed from your paths. We, we prepare for war instead of peace. peace. We dishonor peace one another and your creation. creation. Purify us with your refining fire, fire and, and set, set us again, again on your way of love that we may bear fruit worthy of repentance and welcome your coming among us. Amen. People of God, a new thing is growing in our midst, a tender branch, a living sign. By water and the Spirit you are joined to this wonder. You have put on Christ and your sins have been washed away. Rejoice in the way of the Lord. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning is number 249 in your red hymnals on Jordan's Banks, the Baptist Prime.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us join together in our prayer of the day. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, nurture our growth as people of repentance and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The first reading today comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. A root shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord, he shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist 
and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm today will be read responsively. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son that he may rule your people righteously and the poor with justice, that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people and the hills in righteousness. Let him defend the needy among the people, rescue the poor and crush the oppressor. May he live as long as the sun and the moon endure from one generation to another. Let him come down like rain upon the mown field, like showers that water the earth. In his time may the righteous flourish, and let there be an abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. Blessed are you, Lord God, the God of Israel. You alone do wondrous deeds. And blessed be your glorious name forever. And may all the earth be filled with your glory. Amen. Amen. The second reading today comes from the book of Romans, chapter 15. Whatever was written in former days was written for our instructions, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may be one voice, glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you, for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God in order that he might confirm the promises to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing, his, and sing praises to your name. And again he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his peoples. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the people praise him. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles, in him the Gentiles shall hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. If you are a child worshiping with us today, I invite you to come forward to the steps for the children's time. I have really exciting things in the Wonder Box. (laughs) So you better come. All right, everyone, it is week two of Advent. 
which means we lit, lit two candles on our Advent wreath over there. You can all turn to look. And it's week two of waiting and hoping and anticipating the birth of Jesus. Now, when I was a child, I, I began to hope more as we got closer to Christmas, right? I hoped for a new Barbie. Then I hoped for a karaoke machine, and it seems that every year I hoped for a horse, because I was like really into horses, but I didn't live on a farm, I don't know what that came from. I'm wondering, what are you hoping for? A doll? Okay. Anyone else hoping for anything for Christmas? A beatbox, a Christmas tree, a hamster, a kitten. We don't know. Okay, we still have some time to hope. Legos, nice. Okay, so today we learned something in Sunday school about a different kind of hope. Hope is trusting in God's promises to us. So it's not a gift that we can receive, like in our hands, like a Barbie, but it's trusting, hope is trusting in God's promises. So today I brought with me this wonder box that we use during Sunday school with something different inside. And we are thinking about this guy named John the Baptist. So, something in this box has to do with John the Baptist. Raise your hand if you remember anything at all about the guy named John the Baptist. Okay. Evie, what do you remember? He baptized Jesus. Nice memory. Yes. John the Baptist was an odd man, and he lived in the wilderness, away from everybody else. And he didn't really fit in with the popular kids. And we're going to learn more about that when we figure out what's in the box. So, Violet, do you seem eager? Come here. Well, let's open and see. Come here. <laughs> what do we have? Oops, in the Wonder Box today. We have fur. We have leather. We have a grasshopper. Pass it around to your friends. Now, we have these three things because John the Baptist was an interesting man. He lived in the wilderness, and he wore camel's hair. He ate bugs. He wore a leather belt, and he lived off of honey and bugs. And, G and John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin. And so, jo well, what does John the Baptist have to do with hope, Molly? Well, the story begins. In the wilderness, John the Baptist is telling people gathering people in. Imagine him in the camel hair. He's saying, repent, repent, turn away from sin and turn towards God. Jesus is coming. Get ready. Jesus is coming. And repent means, okay, Violet, you can sit down. Thank you. Repent means to change your behavior, turning away from something harmful. Someone told me it's kind of like making a U-turn, like you're driving in the car, oh, change directions. So John is telling people, repent, because he is out of God's love. He's saying, God wants the best for you. Repent, change your ways, be baptized. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming to heal people. Jesus is coming to care for people, to teach us how to live, and ultimately die on the cross and rise again for us. So we find hope. In the message that John the Baptist tells us today, Jesus is connecting us to God. In the Bible, we also hear this story, the scripture from Isaiah, and it tells us that one day, the whole of God's kingdom will cover the earth with justice and peace. There will be no hurt or the feeling of being afraid. People will be getting along. There will be no bullying or homelessness or broken relationships. I wonder what a world it would be full of love and fairness and peace. And so as people of faith, as Christians, like all of us today, we find hope in making this place a better world and hope it to be with God someday. So because we hope, we can count on these promises and we can do our part to making the world a better place, this promise on earth today. So let's pr will you pray with me? <laughs> you can... 
Close your eyes, you can fold your hands. Gracious God, we thank you for hope that you bring into the world through Jesus. We thank you for promising to be with us now and always. We ask that you open our eyes to see you in our lives and treat all people with love and care. In your name we pray, amen. amen. All right, you can go back to your seat. We'll get the things back. You may rise for the gospel. <clears throat> Love has come, a light in the darkness. Love shines forth in the Bethlehem skies. See, the heaven has come to proclaim it. Hear how the song of joy arises. Love, love, born unto you, a Savior. Love, love, glory to God on the high. Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the third chapter. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him, and all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers! who warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the ax is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Sometimes unwanted things appear in our Christmas preparations. For example, last Sunday, Pastor Peter mentioned the 20-foot inflatable Santa that appeared across the street from us. It was not exactly what we were hoping to focus on this Advent season. This week, however, Santa is down. The victim, we suppose, of cold weather and wind and just for the record, Pastor Peter wants everyone to know that he had nothing at all to do with the demise of the inflatable Santa. Yes, sometimes unwanted things appear in our Christmas preparations. And I'm thinking about all the people I know who are struggling with hard things this Advent. People I know and love are struggling financially or emotionally or spiritually those who are facing significant health challenges, those who are grieving or lonely, and I haven't even named yet the hurt and horror in our larger world, a war that continues in the Ukraine and in many places around the world, too many hungry children, and continued acts of hate and violence right here in our own nation. None of this exactly says Merry Christmas. And none of it is really acknowledged or welcome in the cultural Christmas around us. There's just no place for it. Which is why I think as I've gotten older, I have grown in my appreciation for the church's observance of Advent. When we're little, 
It's all about rushing toward the joy of the Christmas celebration, and that's beautiful. It really is. But I'm older now. I have wept, grieved, lost, and now I want to hold space for the ones who are hurting. I'm waiting for all things to be made right, and I suppose we all are. Advent, this holy season makes space for our longing, our waiting, our admission that all is not well. Advent doesn't simply force us into joy as if joy could be forced. In Jan Richardson's Advent devotion book, Night Visions, she opens with this quote. In this strange season, when we are suspended between realization and expectation, may we be found honest about the darkness and more perceptive of the light. I want to be honest about life. I want to be awake to the light. There's no way around many of the unwanted things in our path this Advent. And I suppose who could be more unwanted on the way to Christmas than John the Baptist? I mean, really. He shows up dressed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and there's locust legs caught in his teeth and he's name-calling. Nothing says Merry Christmas like you brood of vipers. <laughs> Wouldn't it be better maybe if we just skipped over John the Baptist and went right to Mary and Joseph and that beautiful newborn, all of them bathed in starlight with the sound of angels singing overhead? Do we really need to spend time with John now? The crowds were traveling out to the wilderness to see him, to listen to his message, to receive his baptism. And yet everything that I know about him makes me think I would have gone out of my way not to see him. And so it's interesting that all four of the gospel writers who tell their sto the story of Jesus, of all four, there's only two of them, Matthew and Luke who decide that it's necessary for us, the readers, to hear the story of Jesus' birth. In Mark and John, there are no angels, no shepherds, no young couple about to become parents. But all four gospel writers determine that it is essential to the story of Jesus that we encounter John the Baptist standing knee-deep in the Jordan River. John the Baptist stands before us in Advent with the clear message that all is not right. Neither we nor the world is as it should be. And that is why we need the one God is sending into this world. I suppose the people coming out to see John knew that all was not well also. Otherwise, why would they have made that trek out into the wilderness to hear what he had to say? John's name-calling is reserved for the Pharisees and the Sadducees, those who uphold the status quo. John isn't critical of them because they're Jewish. John is a faithful Jew like them. Rather, John reserves his harshest criticism for them because these particular leaders collaborate with the oppressive leaders uh, and a system that benefits them, gives them a comfortable lifestyle and relative security at great cost to others. John seems quite short on details about the one who is coming, but John knew that this old world was about to come to an end and a new world was spinning toward them, carried in the arms of God's chosen one. It was a world that would be built out of new materials, not the rearranged stones of old systems. John is clear that the one who is coming is so significant that nothing less was required than to repent and to prepare. That word repent is often troublesome for us. We imagine street preachers screaming, trying to scare us into better moral behavior in an effort to avoid hell. But the word repentance literally means to change one's mind. 
And biblical scholars describe it more broadly as reorienting, reordering, or recentering. The essence of John the Baptist is that we need to reorder our lives, our values, reset our priorities, and return to God because the kingdom of God is coming into the world in a new and powerful way in God's promised one. This season, our Advent theme is turning toward Bethlehem. And I, our hope is that this theme is heard as an invitation to not become so distracted or busy or exhausted that we miss what God is up to in the one born in Bethlehem. Advent is about turning toward Bethlehem and aligning our lives with the one who is born there and with God's dream for all the world, for all creation. Descriptions of God's dream for this world are found throughout the scriptures. And one beautiful illustration of God's dream can be found in our reading from Isaiah. It's an Advent poem because it's about the coming one. The passage is often referred to as the peaceable kingdom. Here we see that God's dream for this world is for it to be a place in which peace and equity rather than fear and hatred rule the day. God's dream for this world is for it to be a place where we view each other with compassion and love. This might seem like an impossible dream, but God is able to bring new life even when things look as hopeless as an old stump. At the time of this writing, people didn't have a lot of reasons to feel hopeful. Their country had been overtaken by Assyria. They felt like the dead stump of a mighty tree. But the prophet Isaiah paints a picture of hope A new shoot is growing out of that stump. Christians have come to see Jesus, born in Bethlehem, as the embodiment of God's dream for this world. The one who refuses Rome's rule of force and religion's rule of code to bring healing, new life, and new ways of being in relationship with God and one another. I don't know how your Christmas preparations are going. I don't know if they're full of joy or if unwanted things are appearing, but I do know this. God has a dream for you and for our life together, no matter where you are or find yourself this Advent. When I was a little girl, we had a family tradition. Each parent would take the kids out to shop for the other parents present. And being the oldest, I made it my job to have a list of possibilities before we went shopping. So I would go to my mom and I would ask her for gift ideas and she would give me the list that I expected, practical things, available things, something that we could afford. But my dad, that was a whole other story. Whenever I asked him what he wanted for Christmas, His response to me was always the same. Peace on earth and no more hungry children. Dad, I would say in exasperation, give us something real, something we can buy at the store. But he would never reduce his dream to something less. As a grown up, I made him two Christmas ornaments. One of them said, peace on earth, The other, no more hungry children. And we would hang those ornaments on the Christmas tree each year, a part of our Advent waiting and longing. We placed them there aware that these things had not yet been fulfilled, but also in hopeful insistence that we would not settle for something less than God's dream for us and for this world. I'm wondering, dear ones, what it is that you are waiting for, longing for this Advent season. And whatever it is, my hunch is that that longing was placed in your heart by God. And my encouragement to you is not to settle for anything less than God's dream for you and for us. Living into God's dream 
can be hard work. It might mean self-examination. It can be scary. It might mean doing some significant rearranging. Sometimes things need to go, be burned away completely. New life has a way of asking these things of us. But all of it is about leaning into God's, God and what God wants for you and for our world, for all of us to reflect God's dream. Living into God's dream might look like leaning into community when you'd, you've become much more comfortable just being by yourself. Or it might mean loving and caring for the body that you're in rather than punishing yourself to achieve unrealistic ideals. It might mean challenging those messages in your head that tell you that you're not worthy or that God couldn't really love you. It might mean doing less rather than more, knowing that you're deserving of rest. Or it might mean letting go of punishing yourself for past wrongs. It might be listening to and living out the new truths that you're coming to see rather than just taking the path that everyone expects of you. Whatever it is, step toward God's dream for you, for us. And don't worry if that step seems very small or as unrealistic as a leopard lying down by a kid. Remember, the Spirit of God creates world-changing disciples out of a small band of fearful, ordinary people and brings new life from a sealed grave. God gets to work in small things, things that might seem insignificant, like a newborn baby, or shepherds on the night shift, or a young woman and her frightened fiancé. God continues to be at work in our lives, in water, in bread and wine, and in ancient words. In all these ways and more, God is calling us to live into God's own dream, stepping toward the one who comes to be with us in Bethlehem. Amen. Comfort, comfort now, my people, tell of peace, so says our God. Comfort those who sit in darkness, mourning under sorrow's load. To God's people now proclaim that God's pardon waits for them. Tell them that their war is over, God will reign in peace forever. For the herald's voice is crying in the desert far and near, calling us to true repentance since the reign of God is here. Oh, that warning cry obey, now prepare for God the way. Valleys rise to greet the Savior, hills bow down in humble favor. Great shall be what long was crooked, and the rough a place is plain. Let your hearts be true and humble, as befits God's holy reign. For the glory of the Lord, now on earth is shed abroad, and all flesh shall see the token that God's word is never broken. Please stand. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with those around you today.
You may be seated as we receive our offering. Please stand. Let us join in singing our offering song. God of our waiting and watching, we offer the gifts of our hearts and our lives to the service of all your people. Prepare the way before us as we meet you in this simple meal. Through Christ Jesus, our pathway and our peace. Amen. Amen. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for the world that God yearns for new hope. You give us a vision of creation in harmony when hurting and destruction will be no more. Teach us to be stewards of the earth and companions to its creatures. Restore to balance and wholeness what God, human greed has harmed. God, in your mercy. Here. You defend the cause of all who are poor and oppressed. Raise up leaders who will govern with equity and serve the common good. Guide judges, lawmakers, and public officials to protect the rights of those who cannot advocate for themselves. God, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. You deliver those in need from suffering and fear. Come to the aid of any who are exploited or abused, especially children, elders, and victims of human trafficking. Provide safety and help to our neighbors without shelter, refugees, and those fleeing violence. God, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. You urge your people to welcome one another as you have welcomed us. 
nurture our ministries of hospitality and care in this and every congregation. We pray this day for people who are homebound, hospitalized, or separated from loved ones. Especially this day we pray for Elsie Ricky, Paul Sant'Angelo, Darla Gunderson, Clara Beaton, Nicolette Carview, Dennis Heap, Mariah Kleiner, Karen Searstead, Lila Jane Nelson, and the loved ones of James Nelson. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will make all things new, and the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord God of power, God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered at the table of the Lord, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all are welcome. You may be seated, and the ushers will direct you forward. And with those assisting with communion, come forward at this time. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away in of the world grant us peace grant us
you please stand? And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace this day and always. Amen. Amen. Faithful God, in this meal you have remembered your mercy, bringing heaven to earth in the body and blood of Christ. As we wait for the day when all your promises will be fulfilled, sustain us and strengthen us by this holy mystery. Guide us toward your promised future, coming to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. I receive the blessing. God, the eternal word, who dwells with us in Jesus and who holds us in the grace of the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is near. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is number 266. The Savior comes at last. Furrows lie open for God's creative task. This is labor of people who struggle to see how God's truth and justice set everybody free. People of Israel, you heard the prophet tell. A virgin mother will bear Emmanuel. She conceived him, God, with us, a brother whose birth restores hope and courage to children of this earth. Mountains and valleys will have to be prepared. New highways opened, a new protocols declared. Almost here, God is nearing in beauty and grace. All clear, every gateway in haste, come out in haste. We first saw Jesus, a baby in a crib. This same Lord Jesus today has come to live in our world. He is present in neighbors we see. Our Jesus is with us and ever sets us free.